Hey guys, so this is a video for the hazmat instructors. Here's a little drill that I did with my crew. Uh, they'd been through the radiation module, the boot camp, a couple of times, and they hit it out of the park. It took about 30 minutes. If you've got a crew that's newer to radiation, it might take a little bit longer, but it's a great way to review uh, the basic concepts and how we would handle a very simple call. So uh, the first thing is you've got a, say a car accident, Paul three's gone to a car accident, the courier van is flipped over and there's a package, a radiation package on the side of the road. So they freak out, they close down the whole area and we're coming in as that. So we don't have anything to do with the extrication. All we're doing is dealing with this radioactive hazard. So we're gonna go in. So you ask them, what equipment are you gonna take and what protection are you gonna wear? So obviously there's gonna be some kind of respiratory protection. Right? You don't wanna be breathing this shit in. The other thing that's gonna be protecting you are your tools. So you gotta get them to be able to turn on the personal army dosimeter, turn on your dosimeter, and turn on your survey meter, your Geiger counter. So, you know, they've got to know how to turn on the battery, they know to turn it to one. Let me turn down the volume here. Got to know how to turn on your uh, PRD, and know how to turn on your, this is a little bit tricky. If they don't know how to turn it on, they've got the sheets here, right? which is pretty much step-by-step step how to turn them on. Where are they gonna wear this? They're gonna wear this if they're going in a suit, which is probably not necessary, they're gonna wear it inside an a suit. You know, this, the gamma radiation is gonna go through. So they're gonna approach the scene. So our scene here could just be the kitchen counter. So it turns out that if you take, <laughs> take all the four radiation sources that we have, you put them in a box, and you close it, tape it shut, it very roughly equals the amount of radiation that you're gonna get in a radioactive level two uh, package. So here's the, the call, right? That's lying on the sidewalk, and we're gonna approach. So you ask them, how are they gonna approach it? Well, they're gonna be wearing this. Ask them how much they're allowed to get, how much radiation, it's a good time to review, they're allowed to get one millisievert per year, one MSV per year, and then they're out. And that's a very, very, very safe conservative dosage. So you're gonna use this map here with the adapted from Vancouver Fire. So you're gonna way out here, get your background levels. This thing here is bouncing around 20, 30, 40, 50, call it 20. This thing here, bouncing around 0 0.05 microsieverts per hour. So that's USV. So that's our background level. We're gonna approach, according to this red map, we're gonna approach the scene until we get double background on either one. Okay, so getting about 80 counts per minute here and 0.13 microsieverts per hour here. So we'll call this our point of initial contact. All right, so we'll call this the initial point of contact. That doesn't mean this is the hot zone. It just means we're getting closer to the hot zone. Okay, we're gonna keep on approaching. What's our hot zone? Five microsieverts per hour or 300 counts per minute, whichever comes first. So approaching, 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 So I'm getting 0 0.3 microsieverts per hour. That's not five, but I'm getting about 300 microsieverts, 300 counts per minute here. So that's our hot zone. So now that obviously for the incident commander, that changes, you know, instead of this being this great big hazard, no, this is just a little tiny hot zone around. You also have to be checking the ground. Maybe that package has leaked. So you'll be going along the ground with your uh, survey meter, your counts per minute, your counts per minute ometer, to see if there's any shit leaking out onto the sidewalk uh, and spread. So now we can be here in the hot zone for quite a while. We could be here for 200 hours if you do the math until we get that one millisiever that we're allowed, which is already a conservative number. Things labeled iodine 131, which is used, I think, for some uh, chemotherapy. And then it's got activity, it's measured in megabecquerels. It's the number of disintegrations per minute or per hour. 
how do we know that the packaging in there hasn't been ruptured? Well, if the packaging in there had been ruptured, would you expect the radiation to be higher or lower than what you're expecting? You'd expect it to be higher because it's leaked out <coughs> the side. So let's find out what it is. If you look at the radiation guidelines, a level two radioactive label has got low radiation levels, one meter from the package, less than 0 0.01 millisieverts. So roughly a meter. So here we're getting 0 0.09 microsieverts per hour. At this point, you gotta think about converting from microsieverts to millisieverts, because one microsievert is one one thousandth of a millisievert. We're nowhere close to 0 0.01 millisieverts. All right, the next criteria is right at the package surface between 0 0.05 millisieverts and 0.5 millisieverts on the packing surface. So what's keeping you safe right now? Well, your BA and this thing. This thing is telling you how bad the radiation is. So we go right up to the package, it's alarming. Jumping around, we're getting about 13 microsieverts per hour. 13 microsieverts per hour. We gotta convert from microsieverts per hour to millisieverts per hour. 13 microsieverts per hour uh, divided by a thousand to convert it to millisieverts <laughs> is going to be 13, 1.3, point, it's gonna be 0 0.013 millisieverts per hour. So that's just over the low level of the radiation level two. So we're well within range, like that is what it's supposed to be. If we're concerned that this thing has leaked, maybe it's covering some liquid or something, and we don't know if that liquid is leaking isotope, or if that liquid is oil from the accident, or gas from the accident, or rain for nine months a year, we're going to take a rag, we're going to take a tissue, we're going to sample this, right? There's definitely radiation in here. If that's leaking from the source, there should be radiation on this. We're going to hold this really, really close. So using this experiment, we can demonstrate that hand sanitizer doesn't actually have any radiation in it, which is a good thing. Key here, can't hold it out here because if this is alpha radiation, it's only gonna travel a short distance, right? It's not gonna make it from here to here. We also can't touch it. So if we touch it, especially if it gets in behind this grill and gets on that mylar screen, it's gonna contaminate. It's just gonna, this is, it's gonna be going like that all the time. And then this is useless because now that screen is contaminated. So you gotta go, call it a centimeter to an inch away. That way you make sure you're getting alpha, beta, and gamma. So we've determined that the packaging is probably intact. We've determined that the, the leak on the surface isn't radioactive, all is good. And then you can just remind them that if you're totally over your head, you're, you're gonna call the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission, you're gonna call Canutech, and Canutech will essentially twig the Nuclear Safety, Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission, and have that guy on the phone talking through all this but at least now you understand the steps. So I thought this was a pretty useful exercise to do with your crew because it allowed you to like, um, recapitulate basic PPE, basic zonation, basic use of all the detectors, basic assessment of level one, level two, level three, converting from microsieverts to millisieverts and seeing if contamination is, uh, if, if you're decontaminating a person, you do the same thing, right? You've got to, they spilled something on them. You wipe it and then you'd see if it's coming off. So even if they're still radioactive, but you wipe them and nothing's coming off that cloth, then you've decontaminated them as best as possible. They're not gonna contaminate an ambulance and you'd send them on to higher care. All right, uh, that was a useful little exercise. Use it with your crews if you think it's useful.